Welcome back, everyone, to another Zero K Exhibition match. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match on a new map, Cobalt Dream, between Masper and Made Honestly. Made Honestly going for Hovercraft, and Masper going for Wind Generators. Well, it's a short game, anyway. So, Masper going for Gunships. Ooh, that's a sign that we are not dealing with. Okay, so this is, these are newer players, or at least... Yeah, they're a bit newer players, but I like to showcase some newer players from time to time. See what see what ideas newer players have. Also, because I don't want it to be this thing where it's like you have to be like this good to be on stream. I do like to showcase the stronger players most of the time because it is good to showcase like this is what the meta is, but I like to also showcase new players because it's you know, you get to see your name in lights, and also you get to have Oh, Masper thought this was water. No, this is supposed to be a cobalt sand, I suppose. I mean, it's still very blue. But no, it is not water. Interesting. So, a hovercraft and gunships. I guess both players were confused about the fact that this map was not, in fact, water map. Oh, Diamond Fortnite pointing out that Randy is winning so much with gunship that people are whining out about it being overpowered. I, I'm curious. I have not seen gunship used in a very long time, so I honestly don't know how strong it currently is. And on this map in particular, because I'm not entirely, like, this map was meant to be kind of a vehicle map. It's one of those, like I said, red comet, alien desert type things, where there's a lot of spread out mexes. In fact, this mex pattern here is reminiscent of the middle of alien desert. Not identical to alien desert, it's more of a zigzag thing across the middle. Not a circle with a couple in the middle. It feels like a better thought out mech pattern than Alien Desert, that's for sure. But then again, this is Aquanum's map, and Aquanum has... Aquanum has literally written the book, or at least the forum post, on map making theory when, where it comes to how to place metal extractors such that the map is interesting. Rather than placing it either haphazardly or placing it in such a way that people are going to be going through the center, for instance, anyway, so the metal extractors there are kind of a given to be taken. I guess already strategically important. The idea was that the center is strategically important, or the line between the two starting points is already strategically important. And then because there's, because it's a flank, the line perpendicular to that through the center, so this line here is strategically important because it makes, it's the line between the two bases. This line here is strategically important because it's the line bisecting that first line and so it's the line along which any flanks are going to be concentrated and any front line is going to be concentrated so those two lines are by default going to be very strategically important so it's best to keep mechs off of them and as you can see most of the metal extractors are not on those lines granted the mechs are somewhat spread out they aren't clustered but in as much as they can be seen as being clustered they tend to avoid those lines like the mechs is on those lines that are sparse like, one or two mechs here or there, where they're clustered, like, here, they're farther away from either of those lines. Or over here, again, again, it's like, as you get farther away from the lines, you get more and more of a sense of strategic importance being created by the metal extractors. And, of course, by the geothermal plants in the corners. So the corners are also, in that theory, strategically important, so I think this is more because it's a tall map, because it's a rectangular map, the corners are a bit wonky. Like, what counts as the corner exactly? Because it's possibly the entire area over here. On the other hand, it is low ground, so it's harder to maintain. Or harder to hold on to. Oh, was that theory proposed by Anarchid? Oh, I thought it was Aquanim. Because of the all the stuff going on with random crags. Oh dear, did I get the crediting mixed up? Well, I apologize. I'll have to double check that. Oh, there's random crags. Darn it, I'm... Oh, man. Wow, I am so tired. I Here I thought it was Aquanim's work. Right, okay. You're right, that was Google Frog. That wasn't Aquanim. Wow, I'm so sorry. They're, they are two different people. I should remember this. Anyhow, the game itself made honestly just taking the center of the map. Like, not really a whole lot of action, just a lot of grabbing the center. Made, honestly, essentially making a beeline towards Masper's base. 
trying to establish as much of a defensive setup contain as they can near Masper's base. And Masper, they didn't really expand much. They went gunship. I mean, they could have sent wasps across the map and started building a bunch of metal extractors, but I guess they were afraid of getting counterattacked, so instead they didn't. And now they're kind of stuck. 10 metal per second behind, and they are not going to be able to expand very easily. Made honestly can basically take anything on that comes in the side. So it is kind of clear that Masper is a little new and isn't quite aware of how fast expansion can be. It can be very fast. It's a trade-off in terms of how fast you want to risk losing your metal extractor, or how fast you want to expand versus how much do you want to defend your metal extractors from further attack. But in this case, this is it could have expansion could have been faster. It could have been much faster. And the fact that it wasn't is a massive problem. Masper, I don't know what they're planning on doing here. Getting knights is not a terrible idea, but I really don't see how they can outbuild Made Honestly. Because Made Honestly right now, they don't need to worry about defending expansions. Like they're naked expanding for a reason, and that reason is the contain. Now, granted, if Masper were to break the contain, it'd be fairly easy to get through and destroy a bunch of Made Honestly's expansions. But I don't think Maid honestly expects that to happen. Dagger Halber coming in here, trying to take out everything they can, and doing so without issue. Actually, some bolus as well. Why not? That's even more of a contained Masper. Essentially has nothing defending their base. Maid honestly being careful because they do realize that... Okay, they're being rude as well. Wow, I just wanted to see a Cobalt Dreams map. I didn't... I expect it to be this one-sided. Huh. Are they that unequal? Mass pressure had a higher chance of victory in the thing... In, on the replay page. For whatever reason. Well, at any rate, that looks to be a bit of an... Awkward situation. Masper way behind in terms of metal production and made honestly just continuing to expand farther and farther. Again, they had this contain. That means they can basically naked expand across the entire map and do not have to worry about Masper coming in. Which is, okay, they really should worry about that though. Masper is, has gunships. They could build like one or two, one or two locusts and just go around the map ripping everything apart. I don't see, I'm wrong. Okay, there's a razor, but there's basically nothing. A few well-placed locusts could rip apart the entire economy that Made Honestly has built up. This is not safe. But I suppose they figure Masper is not going to be actually doing that. That Masper would instead decide, you know what? No, I'm just gonna, just gonna go in with artillery and just go frontal assault. Which is exactly what's happening, so it's not an unfair guess, and that's clearly what Made Honestly is, is depending on, and... Well, that's what Made Honestly is getting. So with that, Made Honestly is kind of in a position where they don't really have to worry about anything too much. They just sort of sit there. They can expand. Possibly build another factory type. Yeah, this is not looking to be a match that's going to be all that in favor of Masper right now. Even though they do have gunships and could theoretically just rip everything apart. And considering the cost, like, that's two or three slings. For a couple of locusts, that's four slings. Four slings is probably not going to make the difference between winning and losing immediately. But a couple locusts going around the back, ripping apart a bunch of metal extractors, and putting Maid Honestly in a position where they basically have to start slowing down their expansion and can't just keep pumping production out, that gives Masper an opening. And with that opening, they could, you know, if they break that, break down the defenses, which they have just done... The units aren't that well supported there, but or wouldn't have been, but they are now because that my hypothetical I've been talking about never happened, and now there's like two dozen or three dozen units of various classes coming down the side and making life miserable. Just a massive hover army. For which there isn't really a direct counter. I mean, I like the use of the Reavers. They're gonna help a lot against the daggers. 
But once everything else is gone, the slings are it, and Masper is not going to be able to survive this for very long. The commander goes down. Halberd's coming around the back, trying to get rid of what they can, and they actually can't really get rid of much. They're having a hard time dealing with the glaives and the lotuses. So despite all of the initial damage, Masper has actually been able to defend this just fine. They lost a lot of slings, mind you, but they also have all of this reclaim in the middle of their base. Like, oops. Yeah. 4,000 metal by this caretaker. If this caretaker survives long enough to do anything about it, if it survives long enough to do anything about it, then, yeah, which it will. This mace just went down to... Oh, to the Lotus. That explains it, yeah. So Masper actually has a way back in this game. It's a long shot. It's a very, very long shot. But there's the locusts coming out. Set those out to go around the back and raid. Yeah, that could work. Although I realized actually it was a bit of an idiot. The chainsaw would have stopped any locusts from getting out of the area for the while for the for that time. That was that was a mistake. I I made my analysis. So fair point. I imagine there'll be comments about that in the YouTube video. Yes, I just realized now the chainsaw would have stopped locusts from getting out easily, but the chainsaw has been dead for a little while. And now the locusts are up, so fair enough. I still think there was a bit of room for locusts to get away from the chainsaw. Like, maybe go around the side here? Like, if they went all the way through here, they would have been able to get it. But then, of course, the northeast side is the one that's more vulnerable. Although... Go through here, wipe out the area here, take out a bunch of these metal extractors, then go north. Now that still would work. That would that would still have been a way through. I don't think the chainsaw would have had quite. Oops. Would it have had quite the same distance? Let's see. It was right here. Oh, never mind. No, it would have actually it, it covered that. Yeah, it covered the south side. And I think with... Oops. Yeah, I mean, it honestly had the radar coverage. So no, it, it, that was impossible. So yeah, ignore what I had said. There, there was no way for Masper to get out of there with gunships for that until the chainsaw was destroyed. That was fully locking it down. Again, though, Masper now in a position where they have some hope of getting back in this game, but it's just... It's a very faint hope, and I don't think Masper... No, there's, like, the reclaim, it's not even going to be enough. Made, honestly, with 83 metal per second coming in here. Overdrive on top of basically having the entire map under their control. There is the I mean, Locust coming in here to try to stop, but Flails are already in position to deal with this. Again, the only real hope, I suppose, would have been to try to get past the Chainsaw, like, throw up a few Locusts, get past the Chainsaw, just take the losses as they come. You'd need, like, five or six Locusts, but take the losses as they come. Or just as, like, put him in back, and as soon as the chainsaw is destroyed, because it was destroyed for a while, as soon as the chainsaw dies, go up north. Like, the instant it goes down. Send the locusts up north, start tearing apart the metal extractors, slowing down all of Masper's expansions. Or sorry, all of made honestly's expansion attempts. And at that point, Masper would have at least been able to cut the cut the distinction, it would have been a little bit easier for them to get in with the economy. Made honestly wouldn't have run away with all the metal extractors. Once the reclaim came in, Masper could have, like, and they broke the contain, Masper could have actually gone from there and done something. But that was it. And that, it, what? Uh, what? Uh, well, here, as a favor, here's made honestly his excesses. 1853, it wasn't very much. For the amount of metal they were making, it was not very much. But, I don't... Did Masper just win by pissing made honestly off enough to... I don't understand anything anymore. 
I don't understand anything anymore. Nothing makes sense. That's the second game. Okay, last game kind of made sense because the warning was probably feeling tired and didn't know whether or not they'd be able to win. And fine. That... That was not Masper's game to win. What the heck? Okay, whatever. Masper lost that. I don't care what the game says. Made honestly won that. I don't know why they surrendered. That was... Whatever. Okay. I don't... Yeah, good. Uh, Dimethrine, like, said they're gonna unmark this battle from ratings because it seems like throwing, and yeah, that's a good call. That's that's a really good call. King's Dad pointing on the chat that might be friends. Good point. I agree. They were playing a few other games before. I... It's... Yeah, anyway... The next match is going to be a bit more serious. Two super giant level players, Slava and Lochinchans. Lochinchanch. Lochinchanch. I don't know. Lochinchanch. Lochinchanch. Tom Lou. Anyway. So, yeah, that's going to be it. Or that's going to be the next match, and after that it'll be it. And so, yeah. And that'll be a Mecha and Sonya. Which apparently is a gunship-dominated map, so I might actually see some good gunship play in a bit. And hopefully no one throws the game. Hopefully. I, I don't know what to think anymore. <laughs>